hello guys in this video we'll be learning about flexbox we'll be seeing how flexbox work and we'll also see all the different properties so let's start with creating a div with a class name of container and flex container let's have three more divs inside of it with a class name of item and item one item So this one will be your second item and this will be your third item. So let's save and refresh. Can you see all the three items? This is because I've already applied some styles. This is your container, some background color and some padding. Your item has some background color, border of two pixel, width of 200 pixels, a margin and some padding and all of them have different heights so now we will be targeting this class okay flex container inside of which you have all the uh, children elements residing so this is your container so let's start with display flex save and then refresh can you see all the items have aligned themselves one beside the other one besides the other this is why because display flex by default is row layout Okay, and we can change the layout by using the property flex direction. This can be column. If you save and refresh, can you see this is the column layout? And then this could also be column reverse. So same column layout, but the order of the items have been reversed. The third item is your first one, and then the second and then the first one. Okay, this can be row. This is the default property of flex direction and this can also be row reverse. Can you see it's the same row layout but the order of the items have been reversed. So this is flex direction which is used to change the layout of your flex box. Now we will be looking at properties that we will be using to align items. So in flex box we don't align items based on whether we want to align them horizontally or vertically. Uh, here we use the concept of main axis and cross axis okay so main axis in row layout is uh, horizontal and cross axis is vertical always remember main axis will always go in the same direction as your layout okay so if it is your row layout it will be horizontal and if it's your column layout it will be vertical so let's look uh, first let's look at the property that we'll be using to align items on the main axis okay so that is justify content and if you give it a value of center save and refresh can you see all the items have aligned themselves in the center of the parent div this, uh, this can be space around what space around does is it gives equal amount of space around all of the all of the three items then you have space evenly uh, this gives equal amount of space from the start from the end and in even in between the items this can be space between you refresh you have equal amount of space between the items okay and this can be flex end can you see all the items have been pushed towards the end of the flex container and by default it is flex start Alright, now let's look at the property that is used to align items on the cross axis. So the property that we use is align items. So for example, if we give it a value of flex start for example, save and then refresh. Can you see all the three items have been pushed to the very start of the container vertically. So let's comment this out for now this can be center so before flexbox it was very difficult to align items in the center of the div vertically but after flexbox two lines of code and you have your item aligned in the center vertically like vertically in the center of the parent div so this can be center this can also be flex end you save and refresh can you see all the items have been pushed towards the 
end of the container this can also be I mean the default one is stretch refresh so the default is the items inside of a flex box container in of a inside of a flex container they will be taking the height of their parent div so this is align item so now let's see what happens when we use these properties in a column layout okay so let's give it a flex direction of column save this and then justify content can be flex start and then refresh in the column layout they don't align themselves in the center horizontally wait let, let's just give this value of center so they don't align themselves in the center horizontally right so we can see the difference if we give it some height of for example 900 pixels can you see the items are in the center they are aligned in the center vertically because this is your row layout and justify content aligns item on the main axis so here the main axis is vertical right okay so now let's see another property let's remove all of this for now save this let's bring it back to normal and um, now if we reduce the size of our browser window can you see the items start to shrink and if you don't want them to shrink you can use the property of flex a wrap if you give it a value of a wrap then can you see the items don't shrink and they get moved to the next line and then this can be wrap reverse you save and then refresh so it wraps the items but in the reverse order so when you see your third item is your first one and then so on and this can also have a value of no wrap so refresh can you see they start to shrink again now let's give it a value of wrap and then align content okay align content is uh, used for multi-line flex box okay so when you refresh can you see the items have aligned themselves in the center okay let's give it some height so that it is more clear height for example 700 pixels save refresh can you see the items have aligned themselves in the center of the div then this can also be flex end for example so all the items get pushed towards the end of the container it can be flex start also can you see it is pushed to the very start so we might not find ourselves using align content much often the other two, two properties that is uh, justify content and align items those two properties really does all the work for us to align the items okay so now let's remove all of these let's make this the normal size okay so we have one more property that is flex flow this is a shorthand property for using flex direction and flex wrap together okay so for example if you want to give it a flex direction of for example row reverse and you want to give it a value of wrap so if you refresh can you see row reverse is applied and wrap is also applied Okay, so flex flow is just a shorthand property for flex direction and flex wrap so these were some properties that we use on the flex container 
now we'll be looking at some property that we'll be using on the items okay the flex box items so let's refresh this we'll start with flex shrink for example if you give your first item a flex shrink of zero and when you reduce the size of the size of your browser window you'll see the second and the third items shrink but the first item retains its original size right it doesn't shrink so this is where you use flex shrink and then we have the property of flex grow for example if we give the second item of flex grow of 1 and we refresh can you see the second item takes up all the extra space so let's comment this can you see all this extra space which is left all that is taken up by the second item if we give it a flex grow of one so you can the use these on multiple items so for example the third item also we give it a flex grow of for example one we save this and refresh can you see both the items have grown so this is what flex grow does we can also give it a flex grow of 2 and we refresh can you see the third item which is having a flex grow of 2 is larger than the second item which has a flex grow of 1 now we have another property that is flex basis flex basis for example if we give both of them a flex basis of 0 we save and refresh can you see the third item is double the size of the second item this is why because a flex basis of 0 means it will start applying the extra space starting from 200 pixels we have already given it some width right here of 200 pixel so what it will do is it will start applying the extra space starting from 200 pixel and then he add some extra space to it so these are the flex grow and flex flex shrink properties and then you have one more property called align self now you can use align self on different different flex box items for example if you give the second item of align self of center let's remove the property of flex basis and then grow so that you can exactly see what's happening let's remove flex shrink also okay so can you see the second item has aligned itself in the center so what align self actually does is it overrides the property of align items okay the align items property that we give to the that we give to the parent container for example if we have this to be flex start can you see both of these items are on the very start of the parent container but the second item we gave it a property of align self to be center so this is in the center then you can uh, use align self on multiple items also for example align self let's give this a value of flex end you save it and then refresh okay not the third okay the third item has the same height as the container so you won't be able to see the difference so if you apply it to the first one can you see it is moved to the very end of the container so this is where we use uh, align self now let's see the last property that is the order property so for example if we want to change the order of our items okay, let's refresh and let's remove this also flex start 
okay so the order property what this does is this will change the order of your items without changing the flow of the html document we can change the order of our items for, exa for example if we what the third item our uh, first item to be the third one the second item to be our first one and the third item to be our second one can you save and then refresh can you see the order of the items change the first one is your last one the third one is your second one and your second one is your first one so this is what order property is used for but it's better if we avoid using the order property this is why because uh, when we like when we are tabbing through the form elements what this will be doing is like if this one was your first input and if you tab through the input elements because as according to the html document your third item is your first item so what it will do is it will go to the third one rather than going to the first one so it messes up a little bit so try to avoid using order until unless it is very very necessary okay so these were the different properties of flexbox so what we saw is um, we started with giving the uh, here this flex container the property of display flex and then we saw different properties to align items based on the main axis and the cross axis the property used to align items on the main axis is justify content and the one used to align items on the cross axis is align items and then you can use align content for multi-line flex box and then we had and then we saw the property of uh, flex wrap which wraps the items and then we saw the different properties that we can use on the items for example the flex grow the flex shrink flex basis and then the align self align self that overrides the align items property that we might have already given to the container okay so these were the few properties of flex box i hope you guys like this video and if this helped you in any way please do not forget to press that like button and please do subscribe to my channel i'll be coming up with such videos two to three times a week so thank you so much for watching so i'll be putting the link in the description okay i have an instagram post which has if all the properties of flexbox written so that it become easy if you are a beginner like you have just started using flexbox i know it is very difficult to remember all of the properties i faced the same problem so there is a link in the description of my instagram post okay there you will find all the properties with all the different values that you can give to it okay so whether it's a container or uh, whether it's a property to be applied to the item everything is very precise do check it out and thank you so much for watching